I'm Farid Zakaria. I'm going to begin with a cliche. We face new challenges in a new world. Now that much is obvious, but it seems very difficult to get the American system to recognize that this means fundamental change, radical change. Both political parties play the usual political games. No one seems ready for big compromises, big sacrifices. It's as if we can afford to tinker, because in the end, we're so rich and strong, and it always works out. After all, we're number one, right? The most exceptional country in the history of the world. I believe in American exceptionalism. In the exceptional character of the nation we serve. This belief in American exceptionalism is something that every new generation has got to make its own. This is the greatest country in the world. I think this is the greatest country in the world. The greatest nation on earth. Now, I'm an immigrant. I am not an American by accident of birth, but by choice. I voted with my feet and came to this country. So, of course, I do believe that America is exceptional. But I think it's important to examine the facts carefully to figure out just where we stand in today's world. America is indisputably number one by some key measures. We have the world's largest economy, military, scientific establishment, the biggest technology companies. We are just as indisputably falling behind in many other key areas, well behind other countries. Let's take a look at some recent rankings. The United States is the fourth most competitive country in the world economically. Good. We're only the fifth best country in which to run a business. America's enrollment rate for elementary school, however, ranks 79th in the world. We're only 12th in the percentage of college graduates among rich countries. America's 15-year-olds are ranked 19th in science and 24th in math. Our infrastructure ranks 23rd. We're 41st in the world on infant mortality, 49th on life expectancy. Perhaps most worrying, America is no longer a place where anyone can make it. Last year, the OECD issued a study of social mobility across generations. Basically, it asks, how likely is it will you jump out of your parents' income group? The U.S. did surprisingly poorly, coming in behind Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Germany, France, Canada. Two other su studies confirm this reality. Now, I know what my perception is about America. Anyone can make it here. And there are lots of high-profile examples of that. But those are anecdotes. The facts say that for the average Joe in recent years, social mobility has slowed and other countries have moved ahead. Similarly, among rich countries over the last 25 years, our growth rate per person has not been the strongest. Now, there are clearly places where we are still number one. The number of guns we own far exceeds any other country. We account for 50% of the world's annual production of weapons. We are number one in our terms of our total debt to other countries. But there are really many positive places where we are still number one. That's what I began by listing. But my point is the picture today is a lot more mixed than boastful rhetoric about America as number one suggests. The question I have really is, what would it take to keep America clearly and comfortably at the top and to restore it to that place in areas in which it has slipped?